I was diagnosed with kidney failure about when I was about seven, so about 32 years ago. After the transplant, it was great. I was working in the city, went out. It's like nobody would have known. I've been on dialysis since June last year. I'm not living, I'm just existing. I feel like all I do is come here, machine, go home, get over it and come here, machine. You know, you're constantly getting over it. The MRC Centre for Transplantation brings together a number of different people, all based at King's College London. At Sky's Hospital, we've built together this very large multidisciplinary group. It puts together people who've got a scientific background, clinical background, ethics, law, um, who are united by the same sort of mission. We all have an interest in transplantation and principally we're interested in seeing the scientific advances made in transplantation applied more rapidly to improvements in patient care. There is a public misconception that once somebody has had a kidney transplant, the kidney may well last forever. That is not the case. The average length of time that a kidney lasts that has been donated from a dead person is about 10 years and the average length of time a kidney lasts from a living donor is about 15 years. We are working here at the MRC Transplantation Centre at Guy's and St Thomas's on two big areas. One area is to try and reduce the initial damage that happens to a kidney when it is removed from a body and before it's put into the new body and that will, we hope, have a dramatic impact in the length of life of that kidney. The other big aspect that is being worked on at Guy's and St Thomas's is how to alter a patient's immune response to a kidney. What we are all aiming for in transplantation is to try and teach the recipient's immune system to try and look at a kidney as being part of that patient's own immune system. The research area I'm working on at the moment concerns how to modify organs for transplantation so that they survive longer in the body after they've been transplanted. The immune system is constantly trying to identify foreign agents coming into the body, most frequently bacteria and viruses. But this monitoring process has to be kept under control because the destruction of viruses or bacteria can itself be destructive to human tissue. Normally when an organ is removed for transplant, it loses some of its ability to control the immune system. The specific area that we've developed is um, the use of naturally occurring human proteins in a novel engineered form to control the innate immune system. In addition to the engineered proteins themselves, we've developed a technology for anchoring them to cell surfaces. This is called tethering, and it's analogous to what actually happens in the body. A lot of proteins on the surfaces of cells are anchored there uh, by particular molecular features. And through a process of chemical analogy, we have devised reagents which we can attach to any protein, in fact pretty much to any drug, and make that protein bind to cell surfaces where it didn't bind before. The analogy is with throwing paint against a wall versus throwing water against a wall. The paint will stick to the wall for a period of time anyway and not flow away, whereas the water runs straight off. We're trying to do this with protein molecules make them stick inside the organ and not get washed away by the blood. Protein therapy is used to treat the donor organ so that the donor organ becomes coated with protein which has a therapeutic effect in the early period of transplantation. The second type of treatment which is called cell therapy um, it comes in a later stage. These cells are designed to suppress the immune response which rejects the kidney. So these are replacements for some of the chemical drugs that are used already, but using a more natural form. The aim of our research is to have a transplant that is not rejected in the absence of immunosuppressive drugs. And to do so, uh, we uh, thought of using actually a population of cells of the immune system called regulatory T cells that are present in all of us and uh, are there with a very specific function. And their function is to defend us for any autoimmune reaction. 
we've been able in the laboratory to extract these cells from the blood and expand these cells in a large number. And then we are planning to re-inject in the patient. By using these uh, cells, we will be in a position that the patient will not need immunosuppressive drugs. The transplant will last longer and as a consequence there will be less number of patients going back on the waiting list and we, this will resolve the uh, organ uh, shortage crisis. Having my new kidney um, has just given me already a lot of freedom. Um, you know, not having to do the dialysis every night, um, being more spontaneous, you can just pick up and go. And, um, but the, the biggest thing really is just feeling well, just feeling like you can do very normal things that probably before you just take for granted. Um, you know, I can remember days when I've really struggled to walk up the stairs at home. So if I go upstairs and come down and then realise I've forgotten something, I can go back upstairs and get something and, and that's such a big thing to me. In years to come, patients that are on long-term dialysis are a much higher risk than the transplanted population of having heart attacks and strokes. Um, so the big advantage of, of transplantation is that it vastly improves patients' quality of life but also dramatically lengthens their life. What really excites me about our uh, research is that it brings together excellent clinicians, uh, first-rate scientists and large patient groups who certainly will need to see some advance in transplantation over the next three to five years. I know now that I've got a longer life to live and there's no price on that. <laughs>